And when the life cycle of just about every company or every product, they have a period that's called the valley of death. And EVs might actually be in there right about now. I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. Well, it all sounds very dramatic, but if it appears in just about everything ever, maybe it's just a natural cycle. So what we're going to do is just have a quick explore and see what's going on. So electric cars, not new, they began way back in the late 1880s, actually before the first of the ice cars. Uh, both of those, of course, were trounced by steam cars. Um, that they appeared well over a century earlier. Yeah, I know there were steam engines in Roman times, ancient Greek, Chinese, Egyptian, etc. But they were little more than toys or curios. Uh, so if we look at the year 1900, round about then there were about 1700 uh, steam cars, steam powered cars sold. About 1600 electric cars sold, about 950 petrol cars that, that particular year. And over the next 20 years, all three were made side by side, but steam first, then electric, began to fall behind until eventually the ice car began its rule that would last for a 100 years. But of course, there were still steam cars driving around for a long time after that, and there were electric cars driving around for a long time after that. This was not an overnight sensation. This is something that happens. It's evolution. Uh, EVs are absolutely no different in this respect. Anyone who thought when Tesla launched the first Model, Model 3 uh, that they were just going to sweep the world and everybody would buy one within five years, we'd all be driving EVs, um, absolutely delusional. It was never going to happen. There was a market for them. It was a massive market and they sold into it very successfully. Uh, but it was trounced itself by the Model Y, which is SUVs, which what a lot of the rest of the world actually want these days. So there was no instant transformation. The uh, first of the Model 3s was launched 2017. Um, and so this already is seven years old. This, this is not happening in an, in an ins instant overnight. Uh, but we've reached a point where a lot of the people who either don't want or don't think EVs are going to, um, uh, going to survive um, see things like sales in certain areas are dropping. Well, I've covered this in a number of videos that for every area anyone can pick to say the sales have dropped. Germany's a recent one where they stopped at a subsidy uh, and sales crashed. Uh, that was nothing to do with EVs. It was just the fact that they withdrew thousands of euros worth of subsidies. And people said, well, I'll wait till the subsidies come back. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes. But the one thing that we're coming to is a really weird one. And that is that we've got a demand uh, problem over supply. So let me just explain this. When we look at uh, the growth of a new technology, be that um, digital cameras over film cameras, or be that uh, Betamax over VHS, be that um, whatever, whatever you choose, smartphones over mobile phones, doesn't matter what you choose, there's something called the classic S-curve. And in the early days, uh, the uh, take-up is very, very small. It's uh, really the early adopters who just will buy anything, anytime. I've done that on occasions. Um, and it's a very small number. But then gradually, when it gets up to about 10% of the available market, uh, any technology now is established. That's it. Uh, EVs passed that a long time ago. But at this point, they start an exponential rise. So what it means is that the growth is just doubling every week, month, year, whatever it is. Massive growth. And eventually, if you follow that curve, it will reach a point where everyone's got one. Like, take smartphones. Uh, there can't be that many people who've never had a smartphone and don't own one today. Uh, there are some. Uh, so at that point, it levels out. Now, at that point also, uh, it doesn't stop because uh, mobile phones uh, fail. Uh, we drop them, we lose them, uh, new technology comes along, offers better cameras or better storage or better battery life, and so at some point ours will start not doing what we want it to do anymore and we will change it for another one. So there'll always be a market uh, for the future. Now, 
when you look at each of those technologies, we're talking about mobile phones against uh, smartphones, talking about uh, film cameras against digital cameras, we're talking about uh, Betamax versus VHS. What you find alongside the growth of the new product, there is a decline in the sales of the old product. So let's bring that to date with EVs. So EVs are on this exponential curve. The growth is staggering. Any of you doubt it, look at the world figures. Uh, we are on for having an increase of about 30 to 40% this year over last year. They are growing at a massive pace. You know, supermarkets, if they can get a 10% growth rate each year, they would be laughing all the way to the banks. Here, EVs have slowed down to about 30 or 40%, and everyone's, oh, who doom and gloom, the end of the world. Anyway, um, so what happens is, while there's that growth going on the EVs, and it is still growing, as I said, there's a corresponding S-curve downwards for the old technology. So in the case of a smartphone and mobile phone, smartphones went on the exponential rise. Mobile phones just crashed on the exponential drop. And this is where ICE is at the moment. And people haven't fully recognised what's going on because they have gone to a point where at first the, the, the graph, the S curve is pretty much flat. Nobody's getting rid of these to buy the EVs, apart from the early adopters. Uh, but then it, it, it picks up pace a little bit, then 10%, then 20%. And now the ice has entered into a, a steep curve downwards, exponential curve downwards. And that is corresponding to an exponential growth upwards. But the problem we have is that the life, exp the life cycle of an EV is very, very, very different to a smartphone um, or a digital camera against a film camera. Uh, whereas you might keep a smartphone two, three, four years, uh, you might keep a camera for five years. Um, with a car, these are much longer products. We often keep them five years, sometimes 10 years, and they have a useful life about 15 or 20 years majority start getting scrapped by about 14 15 years of age but some do go on for an awful lot longer than that so with the ev the s curve upwards for evs and the s curve downwards for ice it's very much slower very much more drawn out but what we're seeing with the ice sales collapsing uh, and they are the peak ice was 2015 2016 we've never got anywhere near that again but what we're seeing is people thinking they want to have an EV but they haven't got the money for the particular model that they want uh, because EVs at this moment haven't got price parity they are still dearer than the ICE cars or the hybrids. You also have people who uh, think they're going to get better much better and cheaper in the future. So in, when you look at ICE sales it's a really interesting thing happening. There's a number of people saying I've got ice car, I'm never going to sell it, I'm a dedicated petrol head, I'll keep this and I'll fight for it for the rest of my life. That's great, they will carry on, they're, they're not a problem. And if there are ice cars available, when they come to buy a new one, they'll buy an ice car. That, that's absolutely fine. There are other people who are saying, actually I would like an EV, but they're too dear. Uh, within my budget, I can get a really nice ice, a really nice hybrid, but I can't get a really nice EV yet. So what I'll do is I'll hang on. Now, I'm not going to get rid of my car because I need a car. I can't afford the one I want. I think technology is going to move on. Price will come down, range will improve, everything else will improve. So I'm just going to hold back and see what happens. And so you have this big tranche in the middle of people who have now stopped buying ice cars. It's not everyone. There's always a group will buy them. And they haven't yet started buying the EVs for whatever reason. Either technologically they think they can get better or price-wise they can't afford them at the moment. So we have this, this bubble in the middle, and this is a really strange one. And because cars have a life of 10, 15, 20 years, it's quite a long, uh, long time scale on this bubble. But it's the point between which people stop buying the ICE cars and haven't yet bought the EVs. And that is where we are at the moment. That is what is stifling the exponential growth. It's not that people don't want EVs. If you ask anyone out there, apart from a few very, very dedicated petrol heads who will never change, but if you said to them, 
Here's an EV. It's got a range of 600 miles. You can charge it in five minutes, same as filling up with petrol. It's the same price as your petrol car or your hybrid, uh, but you can charge it at home and it costs you a tenth as much to drive. How many people at that point would say, I'm not having an EV, I'll stick with petrol? The answer is some, but not that many. So there's a big group in the middle which are waiting for cars to do 600 miles and then they are already coming out but they also want them to come down to about 20 25000 pounds which is where a lot of people buy them but also we have an awful lot of people buying used cars uh, four times as many people buy used as new uh, and there aren't the used ones available because we're not selling enough new EVs so we've got this extended bubble in the middle and it's giving some people like legacy auto the belief that actually EVs might have failed. Uh, they might already be on the downward turn and therefore we need to go back to ICE or, well, if we have to, we'll do hybrids. Uh, the problem with that is there are other companies around who realise and uh, need uh, EVs to succeed. So you've got a huge number of Chinese uh, firms and they have got massive cars excess over above their uh, local demand. They're having a bit of a slump. The Chinese economy is a bit of a, a bit of a mess. Uh, but that's all the more reason why a lot of these cars are going to end up in the rest of the world, because that's one way for China to get out of uh, the financial mess it's in. If all of the EVs from these bust companies in China can be shipped abroad and sold for US dollars or uh, euros, um, that's actually bailing China out. So that's one of their way, one of their methods, one of their tactics. So that is going to happen. You've got companies like Tesla, uh, Rivian. Uh, you've got um, a lot of others in China, BYD, of course, Neo, Xpeng, whole pile of new ones that which we haven't even heard of yet. Um, and these are all 100% dedicated to uh, EVs. And all of those, every single one of those, is actually opening up new factories. Totally new factories. Look at Tesla. They've got Giga Mexico coming online. They're in talks with Indonesia, actually in talks with the UK, um, and they're in talks with Brazil. And there's a lot of people uh, applying for their business. India's the other big one. 1.3 billion people, one of the biggest markets in the world. Uh, and that's sat there, and uh, there's nobody in there. Uh, that's because of the tariffs they, they put on the cars. BYD is opening up uh, throughout the whole of Europe and also into Mexico, Canada. Uh, they're just everywhere. So what is going to happen is over the next two, three, four, five years, these new factories are going to come online. We've got battery factories opening up. Uh, Tesla's got a lithium factory opening up. The, the, the demand is there, but we haven't yet got the cheap cars and the decent cars. Uh, we need uh, £20,000 EVs that will do the same as a, a little Ford Fiesta or a uh, Citroen C2. Uh, they need to be able to do two or three hundred miles uh, easily, uh, but, but it costs the same as the petrol version. And so over the next uh, few years, we're going to have this constant legacy saying, oh, they've crashed, there's no future in them, etc. Uh, but in actual fact, the future's there. But what they have missed, a lot of them, is they've put 100% of their belief in going back to the ice and the hybrids. And that market has already gone. They just haven't recognised it yet. They're starting to get an inkling because all of them around the world have now stopped building the budget cars. Uh, there's no profit in it for them. Uh, they've all moved up market and you now get these fully laden cars, even relatively what were relatively budget cars, uh, say a, a Vauxhall Corsa equivalent. Uh, and they now are all singing or dancing hot rods which sell for £35,000. That's where they see the money. But again, that also is coming to an end. So that's a, a search, all of the legacy are now searching back into the ice and the hybrids, and that's a limited market. As these new factories, EV factories, come online, that market will continue to shrink. Not going to happen overnight, not going to happen this year, probably another five or ten years before this really takes off. Uh, but at a certain point in the future, what will happen, and it won't be five or ten years, it'll be quicker, is the legacy just run out of money uh, and credit. 
if they are not selling enough of the uh, ice cars or the hybrids, they drop out of mass production where their costs rise dramatically. And if they go to the bank and ask for money, the bank's going to say, where's your market? It's already crashing. That's why you're coming to us for extend your finance. So that's where we are. We're in this bubble at the moment. Quite normal, quite predictable. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised a lot more people aren't talking about this. But we're just in this point where there's a bit, bit of a lull. Still growing. 30% growth is quite amazing. But stand by when these new factories come online and when these new budget EVs come out with £20,000 price tags and decent ranges and performance and specification, um, it's going to mark the death knell for ice cars and hybrids. Well, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, uh, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. A big thank you to our Patreon members. I'm Dave.